Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new educational video here at Market Wisdom. So glad you joined us this afternoon. Make sure you hit the like and the subscribe button as we continue to bring you all of the educational content we possibly can. We're talking trade review this afternoon. This is going to be an ongoing series for us. We're going to do the first one today uh, called Trade Anatomy, Breaking Down a Trade. We're going to do this in four sections. So concept set up execution and then evaluation having to evaluate at the end is the key here we want to be able to go back and say okay how did we execute versus the setup and was the setup a part of the concept so neil is standing by he is over at uh, the tv we're going to talk about uh the first part here uh, neil is going to be about concept so let's talk about the trade idea here and uh, obviously let's introduce the symbol to everyone as well Absolutely, Brendan. It feels good to be back in front of the TV. I feel like uh, only Brendan gets to have the fun here, uh, Valeria, as well. But uh, ITCI was a, a gap to the upside. Uh, it's a pharma company, uh, a positive result uh, when it came to one of their trials. And again, the concept here is something you'll see us do on the show very often. You get a gap up in this particular space. Uh, you're looking for an obvious trend reversal off a key significant level on the daily chart and then just looking for entry points uh, off of key failure rollovers, we like to call them, uh, and the key price points. So, you know, first things first, uh, A, uh, does, it fit the, does it fit the space? Yeah, it's in the pharma space. Most of the wins have happened in that regard. Uh, the second thing I have to look at is, you know, when you get the gap to the upside, this is just a daily chart of ITCI here. The second thing I'm going to be looking for is when it gaps up, is there a rejection, and this is all in the pre-market, as you can see on the one minute, of course, this happens right at like 7.20, 7.30 in the morning. Uh, did it fail at an obvious price point? So you go way back, way back to the beginning of the year, and you can see 43-ish area, 42, 43, clear failure at the top. Okay, so it's in the right space. It's gapped up on positive news. It's had a history of making those gaps and retracing. Did it fail in front of a key level? Yes, it did. So boom, there you go. Now it's on my list looking for a short. Uh, Brendan, this doesn't mean that I'm shorting it uh, you know, at 41 at whatever time it is in the morning, but it's more about the fact that it is now on my list where I'm looking for a directional trade to the south side. And again, that's point one. There's lots of different steps to this, but it's really, really important to separate this particular one, which is just identifying whether you want to be involved at all in which direction. And that's a great point. point. And we have to, when we sit down first thing in the morning, is find the stocks that are potentially going to fit into your favorite trade setups. In this case, uh, Neil identifying ITCI today as one that has gapped up on news is a small cap looking for that retracement trade. So let's go to the setup is the next part of the trade. The setup is going to be where we bring in the if this, then that type of statements. Neil. Exactly. And I, I, and I love this. One of the reasons why you're going to see us do the if, uh, then, that is because you want to have a trading plan which is somewhat definable. Uh, that means it's easy to track whether you followed your plan or not. If it's too discretionary, it's going to be hard for you to track your results and be honest with yourself about your trading. So in this particular case, I've identified I want the short. It's already starting to fail. I'm simply looking for a resistance point that I can short in front of. Obviously, I'm not going to be getting that 42. Uh, ignore some of these wicks here. These are pre-market action. You're going to see some things that are dark pool prints. Most of the resistance forms here. First move down, you see it pop back up to around the 35 area. It tests it one, two more times. I like this test here uh, because it consolidates lower at 34, then breaks, fails to get past that first 35 mark, and now I've got myself a level. I've got consolidation top at 34. I've got a 35 uh, level where we can take an out, and I'm simply looking to catch it on the way down, right? So I'm always looking for an entry point and again, there's two ways you can do this. If you identify 35, you can always be trying to get it on the way up. And maybe you'll have something along here. I'm looking for rollover. So if I miss this one, that's fine. I'm not chasing it. I am waiting for it to come back to me. That's how I like to execute that trade. I want it back testing upside. When it starts to roll over, I catch some on the way down. That's going to be my particular entry point. Now, because it's the pre-market, I tend to favor seeing it fall down a little bit more instead of standing in front of resistance. That's because of the lack of liquidity at times in pre-market trading. So I think that's important to understand. 
in the event that I would consider just simply standing in front of a level, likely to be after the open. An important distinction there, this ends up being a pre-market trade, so I do allow it to fall a little bit, and I don't want to be chasing it. So I'm very strict about that entry point. And you know what that means, Brennan? If I miss it, I miss it. That has to be part of your execution plan, otherwise sometimes you can lose a bit. When it comes to the out, simple structure. I'm looking at the next two support levels on the way down. I want to be taking profit in front of them. The first one at 32, so 34 short. We take some out in front of 32. The next level down was this 31 area. So I have some targets. I try to leave some on board for a bigger move to the downside. Bit of a separate trade there, but it's all about the execution levels, how you want to get in, in this case, waiting for the rollover as opposed to standing in front of the, the, the support, the resistance level. That's the key point, Brendan. Now, you mentioned a couple of things there uh, about the actual execution of the trade. And I want to touch on uh, a few things here. The, the entry, first of all, going, uh, waiting for the stock to come back to you, waiting for the stock to retest levels back towards the resistance area that you have identified. The reason we do this is to simply, you know, decrease our risk to reward. So we want our price, our average price, to be as high as possible or as close to that resistance level as possible. The second thing, Neil, uh, let's uh, elaborate on a little bit maybe is how do we find uh, the best place to exit? How do we find you? You touched on a little bit finding those earlier levels, but we can also go down another step here and talk about, you know, what was the market doing at that point when we got to those levels? What did the level two look like at that point? You know, did a big buyer step up or did there, you know, was there a whole bunch of buying volume coming through on the time and sales? Yeah, and see, this is an important point here. Now, this is going to be a pre-market example in, in, in a biopharma stock, which has its own news catalyst. So uh, there are times when you're going to care about what the overall market is doing. In this particular case, it's not going to matter what the ES or the NASDAQ was, was doing, but certainly at times you might take some out for profit if you're getting a market, overall market or sector reversal. In this particular case, one of the things that I'm going to be considering, and you can look at the level two for this, uh, but I, I always tend to think of, uh, think of things along, uh, along these lines. For those people, like I said, I don't want to chase this on the way down. For those that are looking at that short, and are thinking about chasing it. Maybe they don't catch a short here. They see this little point, and when it breaks, they're looking to go short again. Uh, sometimes, I like to think of myself as taking some profit where the later money is getting in. So if people are trying to get in on this rollover and are chasing it to the next support level, well, there's going to be liquidity from those short sellers for me to cover some of my trade. And the same thing can happen at each key level on the way down. So one of the things you can start to consider is if there is a sort of level where there might be uh, some chop on the level two, maybe there's some buyers that step up there. If there are people aggressively selling into it, looking to break that support level, that's a good source of liquidity for you. You got to think about those things, especially in the pre-market. Uh, so I definitely was looking at that there uh, to use that sort of late uh, money chasing to the short side for liquidity on the way out. So uh, in this particular case, uh, as I said, Brennan, it didn't really matter what the market was doing, but it certainly did matter on both the level two and the structure of the trade. I wanted to use some of that late momentum to get me out of the trade. It's a little bit easier that way uh, than trying to pick the absolute bottom out of thin air. And that's, and that's a great point, and, and I think worth uh, repeating. We're not trying to pick tops. We're not trying to pick bottoms. We're playing off what the market is telling us. So if the market is weak, you maybe take your hands off the keyboard and wait for a minute. If you see strength coming in, then we aggressively start to uh, look to get out of the trade. Last part of uh, our little review here is going to be evaluation. So evaluation is just simply, how can we do better next time? We like this setup because of X, Y, and Z. How can we do better next time? Some of the execution uh, might be improved a little bit. Some of the uh, maybe trade entries might be improved a little bit. In your opinion, Neil, how can we improve this trade for the next time? Yeah, I mean, there's a couple of obvious ones here, and sometimes I wish it hadn't been so obvious where I could have improved. Maybe we could dig down a little bit deeper uh, in, in some further examples that I'm sure we're going to be doing in the future. Look. I have the key level. I talked about the three times it tested here. I'm, I'm not usually going to be trading at this early in the morning, like sort of like that pre-8 o'clock action. So once it gets past 8 o'clock, there was this entry point. It did test 35, and it comes back down. And on the way down, there were a couple of points where I could have had it the first time and executed this trade, that same $1.50, $2 type of move. Could have been done earlier. Like I said, 
I miss those, so a couple of things to work with there. Maybe I was simply not aggressive enough, and a lot of times I'll be a little too passive if you're trying to catch it on the way down. You gotta be willing to cross into it sometimes, and by that, by that I mean short to the bid, sell to the bid, uh, maybe even go down a couple of cents if you have to, pay down to get it. Uh, in this particular case, I certainly could have done that and would have given me a couple more executions there. The rest of it here, and you can see this is a separate trade, of course, uh, when it breaks the bottom and takes out 30, another little momentum short that I put on. Obviously, the other thing I could do is I just take a little bit more size on that trade, hang on to some of it for the extended move. So that instead of just adding it to it at 30, I still maybe got some 33, 34, something in that range for the bigger win. Now, obviously, that's the kind of thing that you'll start out paper trading. You got something that works for you, stick with the structure. But in the back of your mind, say, okay, well, if I hung on to 10, 20% of that trade, where would I be getting out on that 30 break? Look for different bottoms, evaluate that, and then see how you can hold on for a bigger move. I thought it was important to show you the structured aspect of this in the pre-market, but there's always more to it. It can be a directional trade all day long. Uh, this was a decent example uh, of that. Certainly a couple of ways I could have been more efficient. There were multiple entries uh, in the pre-market. I did miss a couple of them. And I could have held on to maybe 10, 20% a little bit uh, for that second move where I ended up shorting again. Uh, one of the things that, uh, and I'll, I'll uh, throw one point back at you here, Neil. Uh, one of the things that I've kind of been looking at with this, this type of idea is adding uh, to the winning trade at some point and finding out how we can be as big as possible on these trades because they work so well. Uh, is there a spot maybe at the bottom of that uh, initial consolidation after you entered the first time on the pullback where we could look to maybe add on a breakout so yes you're you're not improving your average price but you're get you're catching that initial little momentum move to the downside a hundred percent so I mean there's a couple of ways that you could do this right but uh, people talk about averaging averaging down of course the position goes against you and you're taking more uh, the best way to do it is to average up meaning uh, you're not getting a better price it's going in your favor and you're looking for places to add. Now, I had already identified that 31 bit of a solid bottom. When it does bounce to the upside, well, where was our first out? That 32, previous level broken, could turn into another resistance point. On the way back up, certainly, I could have either taken some, if you're really confident, shorting that pop, if you're confident in the directional move. The other thing would have been simply to add in this breakdown here. Now, I waited for an even dollar level. We talk about keeping things simple. That's a separate trade that I'm working on doing better, so I waited for that even psychological level to break for a high percentage trade. Obviously, I could have taken this breakdown as well. In either case, I'd be getting a larger position while not necessarily improving my price, but there were two obvious spots to do it. It's important that when you're reviewing your trades, you can't just look at something and say, I made money, hey, two thumbs up, I'm fantastic, no. You gotta go back and see what you could have done better. How can you adapt that trade? Because the market's always gonna be constantly changing. Three months from now, six months from now, a year from now, from trading a similar setup, the best entry and exit points could be the ones that I did not take. And the ones I did take could be harder to get or could not work as well. So you always have to have flexibility within your strategy. Certainly could have averaged uh, in at a, at a worse price, but still with the directional move either the breakdown at 31 here, which is fantastic, or even in the high end of that consolidation. So similar to our trading itself, we have to have a plan when it comes to reviewing our trades. And in this case, we're going to use a very, very basic structure, concept, setup, execution, and evaluation. So does the stock meet the criteria of your concept? And then the second part is the setup, which is the if then, if this, then that. How does the trade plan actually fit into your setup? How did you execute? Did the execution fit into your plan? And then finally, evaluation, which is, hey, how can we maximize this or make this better the next time? Hope you enjoyed that, guys, and you learned something about how to review your trades and make them even better next time. Here's Valeria. Hey, Brandon and Neil, thank you for this great explanation. Guys, please subscribe to this channel and join our live trading show every day at 9 a.m. Eastern Time.